okay now okay we have three kinds of views with regard to the existence of sports law in Malaysia the first one okay said no the second one okay say yes the third one of course say I'm not sure huh? but then okay let's check okay other terms lex sportiva and lex judica huh? if according to Roberts okay there are three definitions what is sports law okay I made concept of course the word lex sportiva and lex judica okay what is uh, lex sportiva it means that okay Various internal administrative regulation, bylaws, and constitution or dispute resol resolving mechanism of sport internally and internationally. Name figure, James and figure, okay. Uh, describe it as arbitral decision and opinion of the court of arbitration for sports. Okay, for case here. There are many other issues related to the concept of lex sportiva. First, whether it is a level of permanent self regulation of the internal sport federation, then when we when I talk about internally and internationally just now, second issue is whether national court can also apply lex sportiva as the issue one. Huh? Of course, it relates to the aspect of judicial review as well as public-private relationships huh, in the nation's courts. Okay. And next is lex judica. It means that the okay, rules of game, rules of the game. This is also an independent set of norm and standard separate form. From the concept of Lex Sportiva, Lex Ludica encompasses two types. The first one, the actual rule of the game, and the second one, of course, sporting spirits. Eh? Both Lex Sportiva and Lex Ludica are internal. For international sports law, discussion is more difficult. International law deals with the relation between states and global sports law. Okay? By contrast, can be provisionally defined as a transnational autonomous legal order created by the global private institution that governs sports. The distinction between international and global sports law is fundamental, which needs different forum, but very important to identify contractual relationship from the inter international perspective. This one happens recently here. Huh? We talk about okay, the appointments of Tanzania and Musa. It's a clash of conflicts between huh? international sports law as well as global sports law, as well as the okay, the Irish governance and court okay, in in Malaysia. I mean, it's okay, with the so-called uh, strong decision of okay. I don't want to discuss this one. So, so, so. <laughs> uh, you know, okay, I know that that's enough. All right. What is the first Malaysian article on sports law? It's not sports law. It's sports and the law in 1989. Remember that okay. Uh, Edward Grayson came up with a book, the first published book in 1988, one year after, the, in 1989, based on one article published by uh, uh, the, the late federal court judge, Akita Tosri Agustin Palos. Entitled Sports and the Law with Special Emphasis on Hockey, was the precedence of the hockey. Yeah? Uh, described that sports get generate, sports generate important legal problems, litigation and legislation. See, since 1989, Many people more need to know or wants to know something of the framework within which sporting activities is conducted. He then divided sports law in Malaysia into four categories. Families. <laughs> and that's why I said not even the second part. Anyway, uh, let me go through uh, very fast. The element of Lex Ludica as well as Lex Sportiva is mentioned here. Okay, in Malaysian scenario, we just talk about two types of sports law. The first one, okay, the lowest level, okay, Lex Sportiva and Lex Ludica. And the most highest one is, okay, the sports and the law, not even sports law yet. But then, okay, I believe that the okay, there, there is a civilizing process in the Malaysian modern sports. After knowing what is sports law, its debate and basic category, let us whether this new subject is generally accepted here in Malaysia. Not even the okay, try to discuss this one at times. Really. <laughs> okay. 
Yes, uh -huh. Let me emphasize that again. Okay, the process of recognizing a new area of law is slow, is slow moving because it is connected with the fundamental progress process of change in the society. Okay. I just want to emphasize that okay, the process of recognizing a new legal category in Malaysia or sports law okay, has been categorized as slow moving because it signifies okay, the occurrence of the fundamental change in the society. If you know that okay, the civilizing process in the Malaysian sports, modern sport, is divided into three stages. The first one, okay, pre-colonization, colonization and independence. Of course, I'm not going to discuss okay, whatever been discussed by Professor Fuke Kim. But what I want to, is, uh, to, to emphasize here that the brief history in Malaysian sports scenario very highlights that the law as a reflection of a civilizing process had an instrument effect on the birth of modern sports and its governance. See, yes, since the okay, colonization period, okay, there are many cases related to sports, okay, whether they realize it or not. Okay. And then, okay, the three to one. Huh? Government also okay, considered sport as public, and thus government want to take the professor the responsibility for its promotion and development. As you can see, okay, there are a list of legislation related to sports in Malaysia. Okay, I'm not going to discuss this again. Okay, this legislation confirms state control over sport organization in Malaysia, which is very good. Uh, for example, okay, the word sport is served in under SDA. Yeah? In general, sports mean leisure and entertaining, entertaining activity. But SDA 1997 gives sport and game a special declaration. Such declaration gives status to sport and game as well as its governance. And congratulation actually goes to the Sport Commission Office for working very hard to ensure a list of identified legal sport and games under SDA is always updated. Now we have 51. Yes, I know you. <laughs> 51 legal sport and game in the first schedule. Lawful sports and game may acknowledge the protections of law as a method of right and privileges. I have only two minutes left. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, there, right, right. Let's go through. Okay, there are more cases okay, with regard to sports. You can see here. Okay. All this compilation okay, going to be published inshallah next year. Uh, with sports law. Okay, cases and materials. Huh? Okay, more court cases in sports. Okay, and then second part. Okay. All right. Now we go to into second part. Okay, one minute left, right? Okay, Scott contracts. Okay, starting block or finishing line. My part is very general in nature, not into terms and conditions because that one we are going to discuss by the laws. But I believe that okay, the standard form of contract and fixed term of contract. Really, it's a block, it's a, it's a finishing line for, it's not a starting block, but it's a finishing line for uh, place in Malaysia. What is missing in the Malaysian sport contracts? Of course, the first one, the identification of the rights of athletes as uh, concluded in the agreements. That one is going to be discussed by Dr. Shafami later on. And the second one, of course, mechanism of sport education, then the about that one. We got to how to solve the problem for these things. Okay, <clears throat> why I said so? I'm not talking about okay, what who is professional athlete. I believe all of you knows about this. Okay, we regard to cases related to it. Okay, we just keep. But we believe that okay, when we recognize players or professional players as employees, it is a starting block for us. Huh? We appreciate him as an employee, as an employee, thus okay, receive better protections of law. Sorry, yeah. give me five more minutes, please. Huh? However, you know that okay, when we talk about players contract, it defines terms of the relationship, obligation and duties. Before this, okay, we talk about contract which is so individualized, plus control based by the common law, okay, consider the, okay, the finishing line for players as well. You know what is control test eh? by common law? Eh? We, 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 we mentioned that the okay, club has greater right to control the work 
and the website is on the rights to control rather than the mere exercise of it. The club did not exercise any control over the manner of performance of players. However, what matters is lawful authority to command and instruct accordingly. And this is what we call ultimate control. Why? Because once one player sign up the contract, he's not he's not only bound by how many articles? 16 contractual terms in the player contract, but as well as all this. Huh? I don't have to mention that 94 articles, I think blah 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 okay, up to up. <laughs> Down to up. Huh? Right, huh? Including okay the provisions on WADA as well as case. So then okay uh, this is a uh, most uh, what we call the killing bullets now, huh? okay, for the finishing lines, why the players okay, should avoid these individual contracts. The first one, okay, the transfer system, I believe, okay, going to be discussed. Okay, two more minutes, thank you. <laughs> and option close, huh? I don't want to be discussed this one. But then, okay, my suggestion is, okay, from individualism towards collectivism and unionism. Okay, uh, this is the diagram, okay, showing that, okay, this is the unions, the professional athlete as well as the sport organization. Okay, they come up with okay, three dimensions contractual relationship to offer better the possibility of establishing what we call uh, uh, players unions in Malaysia. Okay, uh, as a stepping stone, step, stepping uh, stepping stones for what we call uh, establish uh, players associations for collective bargaining and to protect players in a better way. Okay? But why this thing still not working very well in Malaysia? Okay, I'm asking myself or asking <laughs> the audience. People believe that okay, it's because of the sports organization which is very strong or covered by somebody's behind it. But the reality is okay, it is because of the slow process of the legal change itself. The law is in its partnership with sports, or sports law has legs behind its interaction with other commercial aspects of the society. I think that's all. Uh, that's the real reasons okay, why then okay, we still not able to protect our players. Okay, I think that's all. Thank you very much. Okay.